Forward to here, commenting the stage, uh, Pastor Jane. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. I'm actually in, I, I live in Ontario, but I'm in Alberta, Canada, out here doing a little revival tour, and God is good. Amen. God is good. Just like he's good to us wherever we are today, um, he's good here. And uh, an exciting thing is happening in the last place I was. I was there for three weeks, and when I was there, a young girl came out of addiction. She got saved. She got filled with the Holy Spirit. She got tongues. She got free of so many demons. And then the day before I left, we water baptized her. So it was fun, 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 you know? And, uh, and so I just got a call today that um, her friend who is in AA wants that gift. <laughs> like, you got to come back, Pastor Jane. <laughs> her friend wants that gift. So I'm actually kind of rescheduling my trip and I might have to stay out west longer but um he's good and when we put a demand on the spirit of God we get the answers we need and so you know I just stay full and be available to have a demand put on us and as women um many of us are mothers Many of us are wives and we understand the power of somebody putting a demand on us, <laughs> right? People want of us, they put a demand on us. And, you know, when we ask God for more, so many of the songs were asking God for more unity, asking God for more of his glory, asking, so many of our songs are like that. And while I'm listening to these songs, I heard God say, ask my, ask my daughters what they'll do with more. Just like if you're, when you were doing homeschooling and your three-year-old son would come and say, can I have some more paper? You would say, what do you need it for? You know, if you want, went into the living room, you'd find out that he cut it up in little tiny strips because he wanted to make snowflakes and it's all over the living room. Oh no, will I give you more? Well, God wants to know that if we're crying out for more and crying out for more, what are we going to do with the more that we, he gives us? The more that we ask for is not for one-off experiences so we can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit and have an experience. The reality is we shouldn't need to be revived. We are the bride of Christ. His spirit is in us. He is reviving his church. But we should be full all the time because we are filled with his spirit. When we receive him as our Lord and Savior, we're filled with his spirit. And there is a lie that the enemy wants us to believe that the earth belongs to him. And we know from Psalm 24 that the earth belongs to the Lord and the fullness thereof. And so if the earth belongs to the Lord, ladies, mummies, women the earth belongs to us it's our inheritance we are princesses we are queens in his kingdom to dispense his will to bring about his will to decree his will on the earth and that's why we need to be full we don't want to be full for the sense of being full we don't just give our kids a cookie every time they ask we're going to see what you know it's like i, I my one son would get something and he'd give it away so i would always give him what he asked because he gave his away to one of his siblings. But that's the point. There's always more for the one who gives it away. It's you put a demand on God and God will keep pouring out to you. But we have to approach this world in dealing with the lies of the enemy where the enemy is trying to take possession of our earth. It belongs to God. We are kingdom heirs. We are on a co-mission together with Jesus. And so if we're greedily asking for more, <laughs> just to keep it to ourselves, 
we are in error, the more is for those that are out there. It's for us to do something with. And we have to start addressing the enemy as Jesus addressed the enemy, as a liar and the father of lies, that everything he speaks is a lie. There's not a truth in it. He binds us up in our identity. He binds us up with spirits that are attached to lies that he tells. So he tells us a lie. You're not worthy. You know, who would want to listen to you? What do you have to say? He tells us those lies. And if we believe them and we act on them, that's what we experience. And a spirit of rejection comes and partners with us when we're supposed to be partnered in a commission with the spirit of life, with the spirit of truth, with the spirit of freedom, with the spirit of acceptance, with the spirit of adoption, whereby I'm called Abba Father. That's my daddy. You know, he's my daddy. (laughs) <laughs> he adopted me. And because he adopted me, guess what? I have his last name. So I'm Jane Shalom and I'm Jane Shama. I am present. I'm present in my conversations. I'm present with the people that I'm with. His presence is with me because I'm present and I am peace. I have peace, nothing broken, nothing missing. I have what God needs for that situation. If we woke up every day, expecting to live in the power of our last name, which is his last name, Jehovah to Sid Canoe. I'm Jane to Sid Canoe. I'm his righteousness in Christ Jesus. I'm Jane McAdash. I'm sanctified. He's my daddy. And you know, if we just showed up in every situation, believing who our daddy is, it's like, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? It's God almighty, nothing missing. I, I have all of him. He gave me all of him. The Holy Spirit is in fullness. I have all of him. I wake up with all of him. I wake up to a good day because he never sleeps and he's good all the time. So my day is good before I open my eyes. Isn't that awesome? And I know what it's like to wake up with six kids in the house. I know what it's like to wake up with a grandchild in the house. And I'm telling you, everything we need for life and godliness is already in us. We just need to stay full and keep emptying. (laughs) Stay full and keep pouring out, stay full and keep obeying. But there's been a clamp that's come on our voices and some of us have muted ourselves like we do on Zoom calls. We mute ourselves so as not to be intrusive or a distraction or it's not our turn to talk. But I believe that women are called of God to raise their voice, to remove the chokehold, to remove the blockage from their voice being heard, to unmute themselves. And let the word of God out. And we have to do it in our own lives. Because if God's given us everything for life and godliness already, then the answers are already in what he's accomplished. And he did accomplish it not long ago. He said to me, look me in the eye in a vision. Jesus has the bluest eyes you've ever seen. And and it's like he can hardly concentrate when you look at him. But I'm like looking in his eyes. And he said, Jane, why did I come? And I'm like, "You, you came because God sent you because you love the world. And he said, yes, but what was the purpose in me coming? And I'm like, I did. He's like, think scripture. I'm like, oh yeah, uh, I know this one. I know this one. First John 3, 8. For this purpose was the son of God made manifest to destroy the works of the evil one. And I was so proud of myself that I knew that scripture. And he said, yes, did I do it? And I'm like, yes i yeah Uh, yes you did but i don't see it because i see evil and i see bondage and i see poverty and i see lack and i see sickness and yes we know from your word jesus that you made an open show of Satan in the midst of hell, a public display and disgrace of him, and you stripped him of his power, the power of death, hell, and the grave. Am I right? I know that's the Bible. And I said, yes, you did that, Jesus. And he goes, so did I do it or didn't I do it? And I'm like, you did it. And he said, then what's wrong in the world that these things are working? And I'm like, I'm guessing we're not doing our job. 
And he said, your job is to extend the kingdom reign, to take territory, to occupy territory, to decree the word of God over every lie. And Jane, because the devil's a liar, everything that's in place, every evil, every wicked thing is only held in place by a lie. Don't fear the demons. The demons are only there because of the lie. If you address the lie, you address the demons. The demons won't have a hold on you if the lie doesn't have a hold on you. And he brought me back to Romans 10, 9 and 10, where we all got saved. That's how we got saved. If you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you confess with your mouth, he is Lord. He is your Lord. That's how we get saved. And he said, we get saved. You get saved out of every situation where you believe in me more than you believe in the lie. People get saved from cancer because they believe in the word of God more than they believe in the lie of cancer. They believe in the word of God more than they believe in the spirit of infirmity. And they say, I will not receive this infirmity. I receive the health of God. I am strong in my spirit, soul, and body. And I will not receive sickness. And I'm telling you, this is this little chat that I had with Jesus about, about why are we here and what are we doing? And now he's added to it today, you know, don't ask for more if you're not doing something with what I already gave you. I'm like, this is a riveting truth that's rolling over and over in my mind and in my soul. And I'm just like, okay, I'm doing all I can with what you gave me. And so I'm expecting more. I don't have to ask for it. I just expect that everything I need for what you've called me to do is going to happen. But I'm putting a demand on it by moving. I'm putting a demand on it by speaking. I'm unmuting myself. I'm, I'm coming out from the pressure of the lies. I'm coming out from the pressure that the enemy tries to put on us. But we get saved out of everything that we go through if we believe that Jesus, the power of Jesus, the resurrection power of Jesus, Romans 8, 11, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. Say it, ladies. It dwells in me. It dwells in me. And it quickens my mortal body. So if we already have the resurrection power of God in us, what more are we asking for? Are we asking for an experience? Are we asking for a feeling? Are we asking, what are we asking for? And what are we going to do with what we're asking for? I mean, I feel very strongly like a correction is coming to the body just with this question. What do you want more for? Just as like we'd say to our children, what, what do you need that for? And if there's a sufficient need, he is going to pour it out. You know, I, I was praying for these two little Haitian kids that were adopted. And I was going to pray de a deliverance prayer because they needed to be set free from some things that, you know, that were manifesting in their life at night. And uh, they were having some horrible things go on in that household. And that morning I sat at the beach at the end of a dock in a vision. I don't really have a beach or a dock. I do in the spirit realm. <laughs> I was in a vision with Jesus sitting at the end of a dock. I was kicking my feet in the water and he came walking to me on the water. And I'm like, Hey Jesus, I'm so glad to see you. I'm thinking of these two little kids. And he said, yeah, they're on my heart too. And I'm like, is there anything I need to know? And he, he sat down beside me on the dock and he started putting his feet in the water. And then he kicked his feet really fast and I got soaking wet. And he goes, all you need to know is that you go saturated in my love and it's going to be as easy as kicking your feet at the end of a dock. And I'm like, that's awesome. If we approached everything from a place that Jesus has already got the victory, he's given us the victory. A lie is a lie is a lie. It just needs to be identified as a lie and it needs to have the counter truth spoken against it. If we approach everything in life that way, psh, wow. It's not, doesn't mean we're not going to have problems. It doesn't mean that we're not going to have afflictions. It just means that we're going to get through them as easy as kicking our feet at the end of a dock with Jesus and spending time with him. You know, we can go through trouble, but while we're going through trouble, we can have a spirit spa. We can have a vacation and he can renew us inside of the affliction. I mean, that's who he is. That's, that's what he does.
And that's what he wants for us. He wants us to stop believing the devil's so big. He wants us to stop believing that casting out a demon is abnormal and only ministers do it. Because he, in his command to us in the commission, he said, those who believe and are baptized will do this. They'll lay hands on the sick and see them recovered. Why can't we as women in the grocery store see someone limping or see someone when we see someone fall? Why can't we just go over there and say, can I pray for you? Because we've muzzled ourselves. We've muted ourselves. We are more afraid of what they'll think of us than, than obeying God. Because I know all of us have had experiences where the Holy Spirit has prompted us to do something and we haven't done it. And so we just have to follow those promptings. We have to like say, okay, I'm alert. I'm awake. I'm alive. I'm alive for a reason. My, I, I pour out the Spirit of God all day long because the Spirit of God is in me all day long. And if I expect to have his goodness in my day, I'll have his goodness. If I expect to worry, if I expect to have trouble, if I expect to be depressed, I will have all those things. That's faith. You put your faith in a thing, positive or negative, it will happen. We create our surroundings by what we believe. Well, I just choose to believe God's good. He's good before I wake up. My day is going to be good. It's going to be full of surprises. He's going to shower me with his love. I'm going to be encouraged and I'm going to be an encouragement to someone else. And that's how I, that's how I roll. And that's how we, we just have to roll. We have to roll with the understanding the resurrection power is already in us. So when we touch anything, when we touch a problem, when we touch an affliction, when we touch a, a worry, that worry is being touched by the resurrection power of God to flip it over, to, to be correct and righteous and to come into alignment with what God wants. That's who he is. That's who he is in us. We have lived too far under the power of the lies of the enemies. We live too long under the power of the lies of the enemies, the enemy our enemies, the lies. I will not, I'm not satisfied to have a lie define me. And you shouldn't be either. We're defined by his promises. We're defined by, man, think of the, the most amazing thing we're defined by is what he paid to purchase us, his own blood. That's incredible. We're defined by the price that was paid for us. So why do we allow ourselves to be weak, to be small, to be silent, to be in the background, to be irrelevant. We're none of those things. Not if we have the spirit of God in us. We're none of those things. We're not small at all. There's like a huge, a huge God. You know, I have a great big God, oh, who's always by my side. A great big God, oh. By my side, by my side. He used to be a children's pastor. By my side, by my side. He's always with us. He's in us. He's for us. If we move out in obedience to him when he presses on us to say something or do something, man, he's right there. The anointing is like just waiting to <laughs> out of you. It's just going to want to pour out of you. And I'm telling you, he's good. And he wants us to do it. He wants us to stop believing the lies about viruses and diseases. It's a lie. It's a lie. I have life and life evermore. You know, his word is life to all my flesh. So all my flesh means all my flesh. Every cell of my body is yipping and jumping and doing cartwheels with the life of God in it. Sickness is not welcome in my body. It dies when it comes within any distance of me. When I breathe, I breathe out the breath of God on people, not a virus. I'm, I, I am a super spreader of the love of God. That's what I am. <laughs> Cause that's, and that's what he wants us to be. And it's as easy as coming close enough to someone to breathe on them. That's the breath of life in your, in your body. You have the spirit of God. If you get within breathing distance, how how much is Satan in this that he would mask us so that we can't even breathe the breath of life on one another? But we, we still, we still have power. No mask is going to stop us from releasing the message of God. No mask is going to stop us from releasing the message of hope, the message of healing. In fact, I think it's going to completely backfire on the agenda of hell to try to press down and oppress the church because she's rising and the bride is rising. And guess what? When you get married, you take your husband's name. 
So everything that the name of Jesus represents. Wow. You have his last name, right? That's incredible. You just go meditate on all the names of God. Apparently there's 365 of them, one for every day of the year. That's your, that's your father and that's your husband. You take his name, you live by his name. And in the Jewish culture, the name represents the character of the person. So as we line up with the character of the person whose name we have, woo, I'm talking power on earth, power on earth. We must not be silent. We can't be silent. We just can't be silent. And if we're asking for something, we need to have a purpose associated with it. It's like, otherwise we're just going to be, you know, we're just greedy. We just get fat with experiences, but there's no, what, what is it accomplishing? <laughs> I sat the other night, I was, there was a bunch of youth gathered and four of them got filled with the spirit. One was a mother of the two boys, but filled with the Holy spirit, praying in tongues, just moved in the presence of God. And, um, it was powerful. And we know what that, the purpose of that gift is. We know from Acts 1, 8, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you'll be witnesses, right? So we need the Holy Spirit to help us to be witnesses. If we have the Holy Spirit and we're baptized and we pray in other tongues and we're not witnessing, what is wrong with that picture, right? My battery is getting low. Um, I don't, my battery's getting low. So if I disappear, I haven't really disappeared. I love you. <laughs> I, I am I just saying, we got we to gotta be the witness that God wants us to be. We have to use the power that we receive. We have to walk in the power we receive. We have to put a demand on the power we receive. We can't be a puddle or a swamp. You know, we need an outlet for what's in us. And when you let out from what's in, in you, wow, I'm telling you, it's awesome. It's awesome what God does. And it you don't need Bible college. You don't need a prophecy saying that you can go do this. You have Jesus's words to you. If you believe and are baptized, you will lay hands on the sick. They will recover. You will, uh, I don't have it in front of me, but it's in my it's in my heart, so it'll come out. If you believe and are baptized, you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You will um, raise the dead. You will pray in tongues. You will You will cast out demons you will pick up anything deadly and it will not harm you. So if you pick up a deadly virus, guess what? It's not harming you. It doesn't belong to you. Nothing deadly defines you. If you believe in the power of this disease, if you believe in the power of what's going on in the world, um, if you believe the devil is big enough, big enough to stop uh, President Trump from winning the next four years, you know, that, that's where your mind will focus and you'll worry but we don't worry. We stand in faith. We believe that God has a plan and he's going to make it happen. And so that is, uh, that is my word of encouragement today. And um, I trust that it does encourage you. What are we asking for and why do we want it? And what, what are we believing? Because if we believe in Jesus, that he, ra- that he was raised from the dead. That resurrection power is present with us for every problem, everything we face. There's a solution in it. The solution's already been paid for. It's already been provided. We just have to grab the promise and insert the promise where the lie was and tell the lie it doesn't exist and tell the demons attached to the lie, get out of here. That's it. It's so simple. It's the simple gospel. <laughs> Love him and love people and watch the world change. Live better, love better, change the world, right? That's who we are. We have a say. We have a voice. And God is using us in this hour. So I bless each of you. I bless you in your coming and in your going. But I bless your voices. I bless the revelation of the word of truth in your heart. I bless it. And I ask God, I ask God to drive it deep into your soul. I ask God that he would heal your soul, that he would cause you to be able to identify every lie that you have believed, every lie that the enemy has has put over your life, lies that have come from your past, from your father's side, from your mother's side. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over those lies. And I say, no lie has the power to divine, define my sisters. They are defined by the truth of the word of God. They are defined 
by scripture. They are defined by the promises of God. That is their definition. They are, they are the bride of Christ. They are your daughters. They are your princesses. They are your ambassadors of the kingdom to establish your kingdom rule, the reign of your kingdom realm on the earth. They don't walk with their feet in the earthly realm. They're, they walk in the heavens realm. They walk in the realm of the kingdom. They walk with kingdom authority. They walk with kingdom words. They speak with kingdom words. They think kingdom thoughts. And even as your thoughts are higher than their thoughts, God, you lift them into your thoughts so they know your thoughts because they know Jesus and they know who you are, Father. Come your kingdom and be done your will. In Jesus' name, amen.